Hi, this is Manos Boulakis from Minneapolis Heart Institute. It is a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Tony Speedy from the Missouri Heart Center, who is going to present case 60 for the second edition of the Myelop CTO interventions. Tony, thank you very much for presenting this case. Thank you, Manos. Now, this first case is actually a relatively young patient who had uh, persistent angina, uh, had an old bypass surgery, and uh, an abnormal stress test with a large area of ischemia. And really, the key points are um, how to deal with a blunt cap or a cap that we can't penetrate easily and what the options are. So you'll see it's a right coronary artery. Just go on. You just see here by the appearance of the cap, it's very blunt. And these are classically sometimes very difficult to penetrate. And this one, uh, these are just the diagnostic pictures, but it gives you a picture. It's a short cap with minimal uh, uh, distance. So, um, you know, our guide would back out. We had trouble with a variety of wires when we started the case. And you can see that there is, through the mammary, some pretty nice potential collaterals from the septal. We usually try not to go down the mammary if possible. You can see from the diagnostic angiogram uh, that this, or this, from this angiogram, we have two guides. And we have a guide going to the mammary and a guide going through the native left main. And you can see the LED was open, so we just used the mammary to guide us initially. And we brought our catheter down the native LAD so that we didn't have to take a chance on injuring the mammary. And it, uh, we decided to initially get uh, some progress retrograde. And so our uh, Xi'an wire is going down a, a septal branch up the PDA and toward the distal right. And now uh, we know we've had trouble getting anywhere on the uh, antigrade cat, but we decided to do a Carlino. And if you watch, uh, watch carefully we just injected a very small amount of uh, contrast which comes just right now there's just a little bit of staining on both sides of the vessel so you can uh, this is just a tiny amount of dye through a 3 cc syringe less than a cc on this case that staining was about all we were looking for and that dramatically changed the uh, proximal cap so next uh, we bring down a pilot 200 wire uh, you can see our retrograde wire is going up the uh, distal right and setting an RV marginal just uh, uh, comfortably there. And that's a comfortable spot to leave it while we're working uh, uh, to soften our integrate cap. So when we bring out the pilot, it actually just literally falls. Uh, this is the first pass. It kind of just falls into that submental space uh, without any resistance. And uh, we haven't knuckled it or anything yet. That's just the first time it comes out. It's still a little straight and it moves partially down the proximal right coronary artery toward the, uh, toward the distal wire that's coming retrograde. And now you can see this is an REO projection. We've got uh, our wires knuckled, antegrade, and retrograde, but they're dancing uh, nicely together. So we're feeling comfortable that both are going in the right plane. Here you can see the loop of the knuckle and kind of the size of the uh, potential uh, architecture of the vessel. But again, two different views show us uh, comfort that, uh, that we're not outside of the architecture. Now on this picture, you can see uh, we're setting up for reverse cart, but uh, we have a lot of distance uh, proximally, uh, which really what we're doing here is setting up for guideline or facilitator reverse cart. So if you look, you can see a, a guideline in the distal right cornery guide and, um, and that our retrograde microcatheter has uh, moved a fair distance from our antegrade equipment. So as we let the balloon down, we slide the guide liner over the balloon to, to bring it down into the mid right coronary artery where the two catheters are close to each other and we'll have a better chance of connecting our gear. So now the guide liner is down the proximal right coronary artery and we're just driving the wire this is where the catheters uh, integrate and retrograde, where the wires were very close to each other. So now the wire, uh, without a lot of effort, uh, uh, just goes right up the, uh, the guide liner. And it, it decreases our, um, our distance between the gear and makes it much easier to connect. The pilot? So uh, that was a pilot. Uh, you know, if it wouldn't have worked, we might have used a Pro 12 or a Gaia. But the pilot worked nicely on this one, and I think our space was close together. And then we just bring the, uh, the retrograde microcatheter up into our guide liner and, and uh, change out for an externalization wire. And then 
and just to shorten the case, uh, we could go ahead and just dilate stent after ivising. And uh, so you've got a nice large right coronary artery. Um, and I think this is a way you can do this case very, very safely without a lot of time. Great, thanks, Tony. That was an amazing case. So a couple of thoughts. I saw you were having feeling from the Lima, but the guide you use is the left main guide. Correct. So do you uh, do you ever go down the Lima, or what are your thoughts about going after from the Lima if you didn't have an option? Yeah, uh, uh, we would do it occasionally, but kind of save it as a as a last resort. Uh, you can do it safely if you're careful, but uh, you always dread the possibility of injuring the Lima, <clears throat> and then uh, maybe causing anterior ischemia. Uh, so we try to avoid that if possible. And this, it's kind of nice when there is an option at least to go down the native vessel. We just use the lima to, to guide us because when we injected the native vessel in this case, the lima was filling that distal LED and you couldn't see it if you just injected the native vessel. You couldn't see any of the collaterals or where you were going. So it did help to um, have two guides initially in the left system. And then once we got around, we took the lima guide out and used that femoral access for uh, access to the right coronary artery to the CTO. Perfect. And sometimes, I think sometimes we use triple access in cases like this, one right. on the Lima and one on the left main, but this is a great solving. And one more question in terms of the guideliner reverse card. Do you typically use eight French um, guideliners for this? Or? So it depends, but yeah, the eight French is probably the most ideal because it gives you the largest uh, area to shoot for retrograde, so it, it can, can simplify your case. Uh, occasionally the eight French you know, because of its profile, it's harder to get down, especially if you've got a calcified or tortuous vessel. So sometimes we will use a six or a seven. Um, but the, the most ideal, especially if you have a large vessel, is the larger guideline or the eight French. Thanks again for a wonderful case. You bet. Thank you.